Welcome to Tampa, Florida, home of Steinbrenner Field, where the Red Sox suffer an 8-1 loss to the New York Yankees. I'm Mike Petralia, joined by Red Sox senior writer and editor for WBEI.com, Rob Bradford. Uh, Rob, obviously, the score was secondary, as it always is in spring training action. First of all, the takeaway from Felix Dubron. He was the starter today. Coming in, he had had two starts, six shutout innings, so very impressive today, not the case. He made it uh, into the fourth inning, se uh, 74 pitches, but did not have command. Ten hits, gave up seven earned runs. It was just a rough outing. He just didn't have it to get down. Yeah, you said it, Drags. I mean, he just didn't have it. You have these starts in spring training. You just try not to have them too close to the regular season. I mean, Felix Gibran has been one of the stories of spring training so far. He's been one of the most optimistic signs of this whole starting rotation. That's why they feel confident slotting him in at the number three spot. But today, he was very hittable. They were on everything he threw up there. Now, the key is, number one, to stay healthy, which, as you pointed out, I remember the clubhouse, he is healthy. And number two, getting his confidence to where it needs to be coming into the last week and a half. The other thing that uh, Felix Dubron talked about, and, and we were in the clubhouse with him uh, right after the game, or, you know, right after he came off the mound, and he said uh, that the mechanics that the team worked with him on uh, in the offseason and here early in spring training, he struggled with a little bit today. He said that uh, in the couple of the innings where the Yankees got hit and, and he lost his command, he was hurrying up to them. Yeah, and one of the things also earlier in the game, you can see right out of the game, was his tempo up again. And with him, it's so, so key where you want the pace, you want the good pace. And that's how he was earlier in the camp, and and he just was not comfortable. And for what you kind of along the lines of what you said, that leads you to believe that he wasn't comfortable with his mechanics, he wasn't comfortable with how he's throwing the ball. And we'll say it again: that you, you take this start. This happens every once in a while, but you want to make the most of your next start because this a week and a half to go, right? And you have to have confidence getting into the regular season. All right, uh, Grady Sizemore did not make the trip, but Jackie Bradley Jr. did. And it's one of the big topics here in 2014 Red Sox spring training. What are the Red Sox going to do with, first of all, center field, and then their outfield as a collective unit? Uh, John Farrell said before the game, he was asked, you know, could he envision a situation, a scenario, uh, where his only two experienced center fielders uh, would be Grady Sizemore and Shane Victorino? He said, sure, I could envision that. And that would obviously indicate that Jackie Prantley Jr., who started today, played very good center field. He tracked the ball to center off the bat of Alfonso Soriano, caught it. Uh, uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. could start in Pawtucket. Would you be shocked by that? No, I wouldn't be shocked at all because you're just talking about too many outfielders right now for not enough positions. You, you say Brady Sizemore is healthy and they feel like he can play the majority of the time. Then you have Mike Carp, Daniel Nava, Shane Victorino, Johnny Gomes, right. and Grady Sizemore. So there's no room for Jackie Bradley. The problem they might have, though, is that Shane Victorino's been banged up this spring training, right. and he's the backup center fielder. So if you have a guy in Grady Sizemore who might not be able to play every day, then you need someone to fill in. They're going to get Daniel Knopf at center field at some point. But I think in the ideal world, Jackie Bradley would be on his team, but this isn't the ideal world. I still think they might try to do something along the lines because Craig, Jack Bradley, as we saw today, is a good player. He's done nothing to, to force his way out of the conversation. It's just Sizemore has forced himself in. After the game uh, today, it was John Farrell saying that we're not asking Jackie Bradley Jr. to replace Jacoby Ellsbury. Far from it. And that leads us into our next topic. Uh, a number two that played for the Red Sox last year, Jacoby Ellsbury, obviously, had a little gift from the Red Sox waiting for him uh, in the Yankee clubhouse uh, this morning. T tell us, Rob, you were there. Uh, what was behind the uh, gift bags, so to speak, <laughs> in front of Jacoby's locker? Well, you know, one of the things that he had in his locker was a commemorative bottle of champagne from the 2013 World Championship, which John Lester passed along. But that was just part of the entire package, which the Red Sox uh, equipment people I brought to Jacoby Ellsbury because you wonder, say, what are these Red Sox duffel bags doing in front of Jacoby Ellsbury's right. locker? You figure it's well into spring training. He must have his Yankees gear by now. Well, the fact was is that they had put some gifts and some knickknacks or whatever into these duffel bags 
from the team, from his former teammates to pass along because not a lot of the regulars made the trip. So I think that Jacoby really appreciated that because you never know. You leave for the first time, you never know how you're going to be received. And I think that did his heart pretty, pretty well. As for Jacoby, he's moved on now, and uh, he's quite comfortable with the Yankees and getting ready for the season. He did not play today, obviously. Um, he was out with a strained right calf that suffered uh, over the weekend, uh, suffered that injury over the weekend. But uh, Jacoby, uh, what he had to say, uh, Rob, what were your big takeaways in terms of how he's moving on and how the Red Sox are moving on? Well, I mean, he, he said what he needed to say and what you would expect Jacoby Ellsbury to say, that that the Yankees came in hard and, and it happened very quick. They won the World Series and boom, there's the offseason. And no one's begrudging Jacoby Ellsbury for taking that type of offer. And I think that's the difference here. There's no Johnny Damon, they didn't let me make, a, make the final offer sort of thing. It was, the Yankees came in, blew them away. The Red Sox just weren't going to go to that level. He seems pretty comfortable. But, you know, Trags, I think that, that we saw this with Carl Crawford. Not to say the same thing's going to happen. But you're reminded when a guy is with an organization for the entirety of their professional career and you switch for the first time, it's never an easy thing because you're used to doing one way all your professional career. And uh, so it remains to be seen what's going to happen, but uh, I think that right now he feels pretty good about it. All right, that'll be a wrap here from uh, Legends Field, actually now formally called Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, Florida. This is the spring training home of the Yankees, who claim an 8-1 win over the Boston Red Sox on Tuesday afternoon. He is Rob Bradford, too cool for shades. I'm Mike Petralia from Steinbrenner Field here in Tampa, weei.com.